up a J right after. We got off the phone, yeah. We just reconnected. Been a while since we spoke. You tell me that it's been destined, but the uncertainty, baby, it made you shy away. Now you're not saying I won't make it. What you trying to say? All right, everybody. Here we are here at the office. Um, was able to finish off my. Um, we'll almost finish off my podcast on um, Atomic Habits by James Clear. And so um, let's talk about Motivation Monday and how a lot of times our motivation and our inspiration can wane. It can kind of, you know, just, just get, it just isn't always there, right? And so what we're left is to our habits. And so one of the quotes he has in there that people often uh, rise up to their level of habits and so he breaks it down into four different areas of habit is cue, craving, response, and reward. And so the cue is what's, what, what is that um, reminder for you to have a habit? So he uses an example of a woman that um, she would go horseback riding. Whenever she would go horseback riding, that's when she would smoke. And so she eventually quit smoking and at the same time, she actually stopped uh, riding horses. And so years later, about 15 or 20 years later, she's going horseback riding and all of a sudden has this uh, craving to smoke a cigarette. She didn't know that that was the cue. That's what got her to, um, to um, the, the cue of horseback riding then um, was the what, what caused her to want to be able to crave a cigarette and then um, then of course she would then smoke that was the response and the reward of course was the cigarette itself and so when you start looking at what um, what is the different cues that cause the cravings that we want when you start looking at what you want to be being able, being able to do you want to be able to make sure that your um, the cravings based on the cues that you have in your life are leading to what you want. And so ultimately, if let's say, for example, you wanna be able to make sure that you're effectively networking, you wanna be able to then put those into your calendar. Um, the cue then is if it's on your calendar, you'll go to the meeting, you'll go to that, that event. And so by putting it on your calendar ahead of time, that's the cue. The craving that you're creating is, oh, then I'll go network. Well, then have some business cards, have some brochures, maybe even have an elevator speech um, memorized out. Um, and then that way you're more effective when you get to that networking event. But you gotta, the cue then would be it's on your calendar. That means if it's on your calendar, you're gonna go. And then after that, the response then, or excuse me, the craving is, is to be able to enjoy going out to meet meet people and then finally then you'll eventually do those things so um, and the reward of course then is being a little more well known knowing what others do professionally in your in your community habits are powerful because they end up leading to what we want whether that's a good thing or a bad thing so each of us have different habits that we're doing and the different actions, and those lead to the results that we ultimately want or don't want. I have a habit uh, that I overeat. So, <clears throat> uh, um, obviously then, the cue would be is that at some point I need to stop, I need to say no to those cravings and eat less. Um, so, as you think about what you're doing, what are the cues in your life that lead to different cravings, and are those cravings good or bad? Um, and then what is your response to those cravings? Again, good or bad. And are you, then do you get the reward that you want? Again, good or bad. We all have good habits, we all have bad habits. The, the next step in this, um, the habit forming, is that you wanna break down whatever ultimately you, where you wanna go into smaller sizes, uh, smaller pieces, and you wanna create your environment so that way it's conducive for you to get what you ultimately want um, out, of your, out of your environment. So he talks about how if you wanna eat fruit, then put fruit out on the table, put fruit around you so that way it's easily seen. Um, if you wanna work out, maybe you're putting in gym clothes the moment you get home from, from the office um, from, from work, and that way it's gonna encourage you to go for the walk, to go to the gym, um, you know, it's, <clears throat> it's those small little things that we do to make it a little bit more simpler to do the habits that we ultimately want. Let's go to the office. It's Tuesday. Like, to be encouraged and to be offered, you know, whatever. But at the other side of that token, people don't wander around being like, oh, like, what can I do for somebody else? Like, people don't really operate that way. Yeah. So, would come in, luckily I'm able to be like, hey, I need this. 
Um, that would be great. I also want to in the reality um, of, yeah, I don't know, that it does. It does. So you hit a, a few things for you. Self-care, it sounds like it's not only um, that the workload isn't to an unhealthy standard. At the same time, it sounds like company culture-wise, you want it to be that, hey, even though we're all working here, we have our own tasks, but we're still kind of looking out for each other. Does that kind of help describe it a little? All right, everybody. Hope you're doing great. Um, just wanted to show you a little bit about kind of what I have going on here on the board because I think it gives a little bit of context on just overall planning and um, you know you I don't want my planning to take away from ultimately what I'm trying to accomplish what I'm trying to do uh, so I thought I'd put on the vest here then the jacket and take you through a nice formalized uh, conversation about how I have a look at these things so um, the first is I have <clears throat> some of my words more execute consistent definable repeatable consistent so it's this idea that as I'm able to um, put different things into play, I'm able to then duplicate it in the future. So it's not a one-off chance. It's putting in the right habits that lead to the success that I want. Um, the wildly audacious goal was to get 12 um, advisors CSD in 2019. It fell short of that. The ultimate goal, though, is to get 182 financial insurance-based financial advisors here in the great city of Houston running around getting stuff done. Um, and so right now I have people in a second, people that are doing the marketing process, third, um, and then team. What are some different things that we want to walk through from a team per standpoint? I have um, someone that recently is creating a team, and so we wanted to really separate out the roles and responsibilities as we see them. Have someone I need to reach out there in April, people that are in the licensing mode, people that are studying for the Series 65. And then here are the four pillars I was just illustrating recently to someone that I find to be successful in our business. The first pillar being activity. Cannot emphasize the, I cannot emphasize more the importance of making sure that the right kind of activity and the, the right of quantity and quality activity is being done. Next is making sure that we get the results at one. This is really found in the profit and loss statement, right? Are we earning more money than we're actually spending? Next is we go to marketing. What are we doing face-to-face? -face? What are we doing digitally? And then finally, the fourth pillar is client segmentation service model, right? So that's really the, the core of it. Um, the, the framing that I'll use is from a book called Supernova, um, is having a look at what the customer, ex customer experience is, whether when we segment them out A, Bs, and Cs, how many touches are they having, and making sure that we're giving as much proactive touches to our clients as possible. And then I broke it down by month, November, January, um, February, March, and obviously have here in April. So um, really want to get out to about nine million per year in, in overall biz that's happening. And then that equates to about 50,000 per financial advisor is really where I brought that from. So 182 times that by the five, 50,000 gets basically that nine million. So that we need more emphasis in the overall growth. So really want to focus on is the next 90 days. So I put this up, um, I put the 90 day sprint, that was uh, December 30th, and I'm gonna run until March 30th. So let's just go hard and heavy, see what we can make happen. Let's go. All right, everybody, finished the first full year here in Houston, 2019. It's been an absolute spectacular uh, opportunity. Love being down here. The vibrancy of the business community has been great. Um, the openness, the diversity that exists in the community has been wonderful. Um, phenomenal things happen, right? From a personal standpoint, I uh, ran a uh, 9K, 9K? It was a nine mile, so it was a 15K uh, in, in February and um, did some great things in training up for that. Need to be able to slim down. So we, obviously there's some, some areas of growth Obviously, that's why I'm still alive. And wonderful just acceptance, uh, making some good headway in, in the community, in my network, uh, being able to offer some different things like Guests in the West show, and um, really just moving forward and putting forth the things that I think are going to lead to phenomenal um, just ah, <laughs> take two. Let's do take two. 
All right, everybody, first full year here in Houston. As I recap 2019, it was phenomenal, not only on the family side, but also on the business side and then on the personal side. Personal side, I was able to run my first 15K, nine miles. Uh, the week prior to that, when I ran, I ran a half, uh, half marathon just uh, out and about uh, throughout the city. It wasn't anything that was logged. Um, and so that was good. And then they had some different uh, races, the 12K at the end of the year to, to uh, um, to finish it off and then ran some different races with uh, with the family and my wife and so that was a lot of fun on the personal side uh, families getting acclimated and adjusted to life down here in Houston obviously we're enjoying the warmer weather with it being late, basically like 60 degrees out right now on uh, J December 31st it's pretty awesome um, the diversity that exists here the vibrancy on the business community the ability that to open up the guests in the West show through the Houston West Chamber of Commerce has been awesome and so really looking forward to what 2020 has to offer as we keep dominating. Sherm's out. But I do this cause I live like I'ma die today. Passionate about it, you gotta have it a doubt. And I gotta have it of working and earning it. I am out in the city of angels. I know that they're looking out for me. This is my testimony for all of y'all that been doubting me. The evidence is evident. Music is my medicine, my testament. Meant to be, be true to you, a legend in the making. Make the best of every moment. Cause nothing lasts forever, but forever I'll be focused. Focus on the now, now, now.